So coming to this particular course, uh, who need to join this particular course was the first question, which everybody might have in their mind, right? So what I would say is like, let's say if you have some basic, two basic knowledge on any operating system, okay? So which one you want to choose in your career, right? Maybe Linux operating system or Windows operating system. Okay, only these two things could be your choice of operating system. Okay, any code that you write, or any any tool that you run, you have to run somewhere, okay? Or you will be running in the cloud. Even though if it is in cloud also, you will be uh, using some operating system to run, right? So that's the reason you have to choose a one particular operating system which you want to be uh, uh, expertise in that, okay? <clears throat> that basic knowledge is enough. After that, everything will be teaching from scratch. It's not that you have to have some knowledge on this, that X, Y, Z and all. It's not like that, okay? So why and all, let me discuss. So whether you are a developer or whether you are a test engineer or whether you are an operations engineer or whatever it is, QA engineer, whatever it is, you have to be at least some basic on operating system, that's it. That's all the things like I will be explaining from scratch. So you have to just replicate that and you have to explore more than what I'm saying. Okay, so I'll be giving some tasks as well. So you have to complete it. And we'll be discussing so many scenarios on CICD pipelines and all. So I'll be discussing one by one. So let us jump into the course content, like what we will be discussing in this, okay? So before that, uh, first of all, everybody needs to know like the DevOps culture, right? So why we are into this particular DevOps. And then we will see what is Azure DevOps is all about, okay? So DevOps in the sense, it is not a tool name or it is not some particular, I would say specific tool name actually, where developers and operations engineers will be using. It's a technical name which is given for the tools which are used by your developers and operations engineer, which they can collaborate with each other, right? A common tool. So that's the reason DevOps name came into picture. Okay, so DevOps is just a culture, that's it. It's a name of the environment. like. Once you're working with that some particular team, right? The team name is called as DevOps team, okay? And you are called as DevOps engineer because you are expertise in development and operation sites as well, okay? So here, do we need to learn any language in the sense? Any one language, uh, maybe not, not right now, but going on, if you want to learn some language, you can put any one of them, okay? Based on your interest, okay? Like Python would be the, uh, best choice to start with because that is the current running market. Uh, what do you say? Uh, the language that we use or the Golang or Node.js or whatever it is. Okay. So in this DevOps culture, we know that we follow some, some particular rules and responsibilities, right? So my role, what is my role? Okay. What is my responsibility? Okay. The role which I was given to me, am I fulfilling that or not? That's a major thing which we will be concentrating in. Okay, let's say there is a task given to me. Okay, so like a POC or something like that. I have to implement a solution to my um, requirement. So when you want to build some solution, you have to be expertise or you have to have some exposure on that particular tools, what you want to bring. Or the major task will be like how to understand the concept. That would be the major challenge for everyone. So first of all, you have to understand the scenario what they are trying to, uh, what is their requirement. According to that, you need to bring the tools and you have to implement the solution for the, uh, what do you say, the client, okay? So uh, in this particular DevOps culture, we have some particular software tools, okay, which will bring both developers and operations engineer together to under one platform, okay? So that is a major uh, terminology of DevOps. Okay, so in the DevOps, first we will plan what we need to do. What is the time frame? Okay, the plan will be done. Then the development will be done. Then it will be delivered. And then it will be operated, which means that it will be installed on the target missions. Okay, now this particular uh, DevOps culture, now you are trying to, instead of using open source tools, now you are trying to use Azure DevOps services. Okay, let's say your applications all are running on Azure and your client is not interested in looking at open source tools. 
because you need to have some lot of exposure and you need to have some lot of plugins that should be integrated okay and you need to have some expertise in that particular uh, customizing the pipelines and all so you need to have some lot of exposure in it right so that's the reason what we are trying to do is nothing but we are using the azure devops okay so azure devops is something where the solutions are already created means the they have created so many templates just you have to use it according to your requirement okay or else you need to write it from scratch okay so why Dev azure devops okay before going there uh, do i need to learn only azure devops means the services right you might have already did some r and d on well coming to this particular course right you know the services of azure devops like azure boards okay and azure repos azure pipelines azure artifacts okay this might you have all test plans so these are the services which we have in azure devops do i need to learn only that will i will i survive in the market or will i get some good calls uh, when i go with that particular only devops tools in azure i would say no no in the sense i will i will not say completely no but priority right when a person knows more than devops that particular person will be having high priority compared to your uh, you who, who are having only exposure on devops okay so that's the reason what we thought is like let's not only teach devops let us try to teach the services which are important for administration as well okay because once you have exposure on the particular azure services right apart from the devops you will be having some good chances to get in rather than other people who are already learned about azure devops so that's the reason why we added this list of services into our uh, course that is azure active directory and azure roles and rbank azure service connection for services connection in devops okay and git arm templates virtual missions vnet azure web app azure container registry azure container apps web app for containers azure container instances azure kubernetes services azure storage in that storage we have four different types blob queue table and files and then we have azure disk and azure load balancer apart from this we will be also uh, covering this azure monitoring okay azure monitoring also we have to cover why because once your application is deployed or once your pipelines are running you need to monitor that as well right okay so for that also you need to learn more about monitoring as well that that i added in the last slide but we'll be teaching this as well now why is this really needed i would say yes okay what i want to say is like learn azure administration and azure devops so your resume will be much high priority than compared to other people who are having only on azure devops okay and if you, even though if you don't have exposure on this we will be starting from scratch anyway uh, it is not like teaching only like let's say if i want to teach something like azure storage right in azure storage first of all we need to understand what is object storage block storage okay and what is file system once you know about this you will understand what is this azure blob queue table and files okay so it's not like that i will be starting directly azure storage i'll be starting from scratch let's say if you don't know what is containers first i need to teach about docker right how to build the images okay how to build my own custom images and then how to, i need to tell how to show the images in a repository then i will be teaching about how to use that images and create a uh, run the application okay to store the images we no need to use docker hub we already have azure container registry to store the images so in that way we have so many services that we will be learning in the azure okay and one more thing let's say this is the portal which it looks let's say if we go to the portal.azure.com let me log into that yeah this is how the portal looks okay and let's say this is app service okay if you go into that and then you will be creating some app service to run your application so similarly for everything we have some services whenever you don't know the services click on all services you will see the list of services what azure is providing you 
they have categorized you can see compute related services network related services storage related services web app related services mobile apps related services container services databases okay integration devops okay there are so many services which are designed especially for our solutions what customers might be having or what companies might be trying to implement okay now we will be learning lot of services here okay the services which are important for us and which will add a weightage to your resume those services are added into this particular uh, curriculum okay now azure active directory is for authentication and authorization authentication especially authentication in the sense i need to log into my azure devops portal or more, more, uh, like in general it is portal.azure.com okay if i want to log into that first of all i need to be verified right everybody cannot log into the portal it has to be authenticated authenticated in the sense the username password or token based authentication or uh, certificate based authentication should be verified that verification will be done by your azure active directory it is not only that it is beyond the picture actually azure active directory you already know that most of the companies are using azure active directory for their authentication mechanism okay so it is more popular than what we are discussing okay uh, single sign on um, multi device authentication okay Sim uh, there are so many features which are available in azure active directory okay so we will be learning that what is azure active directory uh, how i need to create users how i need to create a group what is application registration what is enterprise application what is b2b what is b2c okay and then how to add a permissions to the users okay so that comes under roles okay azure roles azure rbac all the technically for azure active directory we have a separate roles for providing the access to the service also we have a separate roles that is called as rbac and this is called as roles but both are same actually but technically for azure active directory it is called as roles means providing authorization see once you log in it doesn't mean that you have a whole access or you can access everything <clears throat> if you don't have proper permissions you cannot access though you logged into the server means though you logged into the dashboard it doesn't mean that you can access everything right how i can control that let's say i want to give a permission to masan saying that he should only access uh, virtual machines okay so i gave a permission to him a role or uh, let's say rbac was assigned to that particular user now once he log in logs into the dashboard he will go to the virtual machines yes he can do everything but when he is when he is goes to uh, networking he cannot do that it will give you a permission denied why because that particular user doesn't have the permission to go beyond that particular service even if he try to access also it doesn't allow you okay so those are the things which we will be learning in the azure roles and rbacs that is called as authorization azure active directory is for authentication and then azure roles and rbac is for authorization okay both are so important for us so critical for us even in azure devops also you have to understand this concept for that devops engineer as well okay next azure service connection what is this let me explain if you go to this portal this is portal.azure.com okay which means that all the services which are offered by azure cloud will be accessible from here okay if i want to create some virtual machine if i want to create some containers if i want to run some kubernetes cluster or if i want to create some load balancer or load testing backup everything each and every service which you want to see can be seen in the portal.azure.com there is one more dashboard which is called as dev.azure.com dev.azure.com here you will be doing only yeah here you will be doing only devops related actions like creating some pipelines azure repos azure artifacts azure test plans if you click on this project right you can see artifacts test plans pipelines build a pipeline and release pipeline both this is build pipeline and this is release pipeline okay and then boards repos and then wiki pages and all 
So these things, if you want to access, you have to be in this URL. Okay, you have to be in this particular URL. Okay, now what is a service connection? Okay, this is fine. What you are saying is okay, but what is the purpose of service connection? Service connection is nothing but Azure DevOps needs some access to some particular services. Let's say I'm building some CI/CD pipeline. Okay, when I'm trying to build some CI/CD pipeline in the DevOps, let's say this is one of the pipeline. You can see it here. Okay, if you want to see it here, this is the example related to building the image and pushing the image to the Azure Container Registry. Okay, now what does it mean? While it is creating the image, it has to communicate to my Azure Container Registry. Okay, you can see it here. It has to communicate to my Azure Container Registry. So how my DevOps will able to communicate to the Azure Container Registry here? Let, let's say container registry. If you search for that, this is the one. Okay. Now this particular DevOps, the process, let's say there's some particular process in the background has to run some API call against this particular registry to create a registry or to create, to upload some images to this registry. I want to give some particular action. Okay. Forget about the permission, but it wants to communicate to the container registry which is present in the portal.azure.com. So how this particular action is provided with the help of service connection. With the help of service connection, okay? And that will be seen over there. What is the service connection? I hope if you go to the project settings, now if you go to the service connection, you can see here, this service connection which I have created is providing the DevOps, okay, to access my container registry with the help of service principle, okay? This service principle concept comes under Azure Active Directory. We can discuss that later, okay? To explain this particular point, I'm saying this, okay? What is service connection in this sense? Why we have to learn that especially because how will you give a permission from one service to other services to access? Which means that we are not accessing it. On behalf of us, my DevOps is trying to communicate to the Azure Container Registry. On behalf of me, it is trying to communicate. So how will you provide an access? That is a point which is called as service connection. Okay, any questions in this, in understanding it? Uh, Pico, no problem. Okay. Yeah, hi Sudhir, whether the service connection, is it an API or API call? It's an API calls. Everything is on API calls, okay. An API call, okay. I mean, whether uh, is there any specific APIs to provide this? Um, you don't need to do anything, okay. Just you have to provide the details to whom you want to connect, to what is your subscription. Those details, once you provided it, automatically it will create a service principle for you. This is for authentication, okay, which means that it will use some token or uh, app ID and the password to authenticate to this particular service. Okay, it will verify it by your Azure Active Directory. Once it says that it is okay, then it will go and it will communicate to this particular container registry. Okay, and then it will do the actions what we have specified with the help of this service principle. Okay. Okay, got it, got it. This is only just a normal high level which I'm giving. Once we start the course, right, you will understand when I'm explaining these concepts. Yeah. Okay. Now, next one is we'll be trying to learn Git. You already know that Git is a well-known tool for version control system. So I cannot say that I will be directly teaching this Azure repos directly, right? First of all, everybody has to understand what is Git. First of all, everybody should understand what is version control system. Okay, what is centralized version control system? What is a uh, distributed version control system? Okay, which one I have to use? What Git will come under? Okay, so what are the Git commands? What is the Git workflow? Okay, what is Git commit, revert, uh, reset? Okay, merge conflicts. So these many things we have to learn. Then you will be looking into Azure reports. Okay, it's not that directly we will be jumping into the actual service. That's what I want to convey that. My way of teaching will be like, first I will be explaining what is that. 
how cloud is trying to rename them see these are existing features say so this is not by this is not by azure who has developed it these are the existing concepts they have integrated it to the cloud with some lot of customizations and they have given some name to that service which they are offering for us okay if you know the basics right you can survive for longer period don't try to be it in the front end don't put your knowledge only on the front end like only in the dashboard level try to understand the core concept that will help you a lot even though if you switch your career from azure to google cloud or any other cloud the concepts will be the same maybe the name of the service will change but the underlying concept will be the same that's what i'm trying to teach that's the reason it will take 45 days to complete the course why it is taking such a long period because i have to explain the devops oh, sorry i need to explain the first of all administration i need to explain about each and every services then i need to explain about devops okay so that's the reason why it is taking 45 days for me to complete okay i'm not i'm not bothered about other things but yeah ex excluding saturday sundays it will take 45 days to complete the course daily one hour a timing and all you can discuss with the management but it will take some time okay 45 days in total okay and then we have to learn about arm templates which is especially a orchestration tool for your azure in aws it is called as cloud formation template and here it is called as arm template okay terraform is optional uh, i just want to explain what is terraform and what is arm template so that's the reason i have mentioned here okay if you want i can give you some additional course content also which i can provide if you are willing to learn i will give you terraform documentation docker kubernetes documentations uh, videos and all okay you can get some what is it when you have some leisure time if you want to increase weightage if you want to increase your resume weightage by saying that i know this one also so if you are enthusiastic i will give this particular documentations as well try to read whenever you get some leisure time okay at least if you spend for two to two months right without any uh, hesitations or some particular breakages and all it it will be easy for you in the next upcoming months actually okay because you know the market of azure right now right so that's the reason okay so get prepared to it so that it will be easy for you to manage the on your own don't rely on someone try to manage on your own you have to be in that particular position okay that is the goal of this particular course okay you will you will understand this what are the points i have told you will understand once you start with me okay that's how it is so then we need to learn about virtual machines like how to create a server whether it is windows or linux how will you create it what are the things i need to follow okay what should be the cost of it okay how to calculate the cost okay how to calculate the cost and how to customize according to my requirement to run the application so what are the points we have to consider in creating the virtual machines that we are going to understand okay and then virtual network so virtual network i have mentioned only one point but here we will have lot of other points actually okay uh, virtual network you need to understand what is class a first of all you need to understand what is network ip address we will be starting from there what is ip address okay uh, what is subnet what is network what is cidr what is broadcast what is class a b and c d and e and network okay how to calculate the ip address then we will be coming into virtual network azure virtual network and then we will see how to create a subnet how to create a route table how to create a nat okay what is bcp uh, what is peering what is vpn okay so these things we have to learn about vnet okay so that concept we will be touching base and then web app to run your applications for containers we almost have four services here azure container registry to store the images azure container apps to run your container uh, image into a container actually if you want to create a container using your own image or uh, public images you can use this particular service and then we have web app for containers we have a web app service for code for containers and for static web app so we will be trying to learn everything but here i have mentioned as web app for containers for containers how you will use this web app service that is a point which i have mentioned what is azure container instance 
what is the difference between Azure Container Instance and Azure Container Apps? Okay, Azure Kubernetes Service. This is the most important, uh, what do you say, the services that you have to learn. Okay, Docker and Kubernetes, means containers and Kubernetes. This is the well-known, uh, what do you say, well-popular, uh, what do you say, tools that you have to learn. But definitely you have to concentrate more on this containers and Kubernetes. Okay, so that's the reason we added almost all the services what Azure is providing for you. Okay, related to doc, uh, containers and Kubernetes. Okay, and then storage. Storage in the sense, how will you add some additional disks to your virtual machine? How will you store your object storages in the, in the queue? Uh, let's say it is a blob, okay? How will you store your objects in the blob? Okay, what is messaging service? That is queue. What is table? It is a no, no SQL database. And then we have files, like a file system. Okay, and then we have Azure disk. If you want to add some additional disk to your virtual machines or for any other service, or what are the things you will follow? How to create a snapshot? How to create a disk from the snapshot? All the things we will be learning here. And then the last and final one is Azure Load Balancer. So Load Balancer in the sense we have application gateway, we have front door, backend service, and then load balancing. So under this, we have these many services I'm saying you. Okay, so here I have mentioned the high level service, but under that you will have some sub services as well. Okay, so since it will be lengthy, so that's the reason people will get confused and they will think it is a lot of syllabus. So that's the reason I have mentioned only the main services of that particular Azure. Okay, so we will be learning from scratch. Here it is not a prerequisite. You don't need any prerequisite. Just you have to concentrate on what I'm saying and try to do it R&D from your end as well. Okay, what are the points I will tell you or what are the tasks I give you? Just you have to do some R&D from your side. Okay, yeah. Uh, any questions here uh, with the services that I'm teaching in Azure apart from DevOps? Are you looking for anything? Um, you can speak out guys, no hesitations because everybody is here to learn. Okay, don't feel shy, nothing. Keep it aside. Okay. So, there, so I have a quick question. question. What we have? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, my question is like after doing your course, we are good for the Azure admin and and for Azure DevOps positions DevOps. that are in. Yes. Exactly. Both of it. Like yes. It's gonna cover the admin part and the DevOps part as well. Admin and DevOps part, both of them. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds good. And I'm okay. certified in Azure administration 104. AZ-104 and 400, Azure DevOps. So if you need any help on that, clearing the certification also, I'll be helping you on that, okay? Okay, sounds good. So you know, how many days the classes are? 45 days, you can exclude Saturdays and Sundays. Saturday, Sunday, because uh, everybody is working employees, some of them, right? They'll get only on Saturday, Sunday to practice. So that's the reason. Okay, so we, we're gonna... So today is Saturday. We have a one first class Saturday, and then Monday no, no, to Friday. This one. That is just a demo, right? Maybe on Monday or Tuesday, they'll be intimating you. So from then you can count. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. Daily one hour. So we'll be spending some time. We'll have some QA, and I'll be creating some WhatsApp group with the teams, whatever the people will join. And then why we have creating this WhatsApp group is instead of waiting for the next day. But asking the questions, we can discuss in the WhatsApp group and we can create some communication among us. Okay. So, and you can ask the questions like what are, whenever you're practicing, you can put me a screenshot, then I can give you a solution on there itself instead of waiting for the next day. Right. So, that's the reason why we are creating this WhatsApp groups. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Any other questions, please? Yeah. Um, what percent of content will be covered for uh, Azure Admin Certificate? I, I didn't get you, sorry. Percent, uh, you're saying some percentage? Yeah, what percent of content will be covered for Azure Admin Certification in this uh, course? Percent in the sense, there are some categories, okay. When you're writing this exam, from every category, they will add some weightage. Okay, so those weightage questions will be uh, like, I'll be covering that particular topics. 
Okay, you already know that this particular exam will be of choose the correct answers. It's not like Red Hat certification or Kubernetes certification, right? Where you have to do some practical work. Okay, here it is like you choose the correct answers. So I'll tell you how to practice that. What are the questions like? What are the topics they will be covering? And then you can concentrate on that more. Okay, so because this content. Yeah, yeah so is this content more. will be enough. For, uh, yeah. for the certification, yeah. Uh, your voice is a bit low. I'm not able to catch the point what you have told. Yeah, so that con the content and that will be covered in this course uh, is enough yeah. for Azure administration. Enough, enough actually. There is some 10% weightage will be from networking. Some 20% weightage will be from Active Directory roles. Okay, so there is some weightages which they have categorized. Okay, and that certificate is only valid for one year. Why? Because Azure is keep on modifying their services and dashboards. They're adding so many functionalities. So that's the reason it's not like your AWS certification. This certificate is only valid for one year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Uh, yes, Sudhir Bhushan here. So my question that's is that so this session will be hundred percent practical, right? Mostly based on practical. Right? practical no theoretical guy. From my side, I hate theoretical concepts. Okay. Practically, when you see it right, you will understand more and it will register in your mind rather than the theoretical sessions, right? Okay. So yeah, I'm so this will be also practical. More of theoretical. Okay. I'm against that actually because theoretical concept. See, you will be recalling it in an ordered way, so that will divert you, right? If you know the practical thing, you can explain in your own way. That is much better than that creates yeah. more flexible way of explaining to someone. Okay, yes. that's what I believe. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you require any coding? For this uh, coding, no, yeah, it's up to you to choose, um, uh, make a choice. Okay, uh, as of now, we are not doing any coding. I'm just explaining some languages how to automate that, how to implement a CSAD pipeline for different languages. What I choose is nothing but one is .NET, one is Node.js, and one is Python, and one is Docker Kubernetes pipelines. So, there are some scenarios which I've created, uh, maybe 10 scenarios which I've created where most of the people are using so that when you come into the some project at least you will come across any one of them so that's the reason we have created totally 10 scenarios you have to no need to understand about coding how to write a uh, .NET code you need to understand once a developer has written the code what are the okay. commands he need to execute in order to mm -hmm. test the code that is your okay. responsibility, okay? And you have to automate that. For that, you need to build a pipeline so that whenever the developer has pushes the code, automatically that steps will be running and that will generate a report. That report, everybody in your team will be seeing it, right? That's how you have to build a pipeline. That is your responsibility, okay? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you need to write a .NET code, no. Okay. Okay, so let's go forward. I will pause here so that you can ask the questions in the next phase. Okay. Yeah. Now, meanwhile, keep give your email address in the chat room, one to one to Visual Path Management, so that they will contact you if anything is needed. Okay. Yeah. If you are already given, thanks for that. Now here we have. Uh, I've told you that these are the services which we'll be learning in the uh, the administration part. Okay, now the DevOps. In Azure DevOps, we have Azure Repos, Azure Boards, Azure Artifacts, Azure Test Plans, and Azure Pipelines. Okay, Azure Repos is nothing but Git repository. Not only Git, it also provides SVN repository. I told you right, in, uh, in version control system, we have two types, centralized version control system and distributed version control system. So your Azure Repos provides both of them. Okay, whichever you want, you can choose. But remember, right now, each and every company is using Git repositories, means distributed version control system. Okay, Git is nothing but one of the most popular one version control system which is used. That is a distributed version control system. So concentrate more on that. 
Now, instead of using GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or something, we are using Azure repos to store our code. What is the purpose of Azure repos? Simple. I need to go, uh, store some code. Okay. For that, I will be using this Azure repos. I can create a private repository, public repository. Okay. I can push the code. I can pull the code. I can create a pull request. I can download the code. Okay. Using this repos, I can build a CI/CD pipeline. CI/CD pipeline in the sense when someone is committing the code to this repo, automatically a pipeline should get triggered. Okay. For example, it looks like this. Let's say as a developer, you are trying to push the code to the Azure repos. When someone is trying to push the code to this Azure repos, automatically my pipeline will get triggered. Okay. So that is the responsibility of this Azure repos, which why we are storing the code over here. See, it doesn't mean that Azure pipeline will only accept Azure repos. No, as a source code. It can use, it can also support uh, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise, Bitbucket, and other Git repos as well. Okay. Since we are using Azure DevOps portal, so Azure itself is providing you a repos. So why we will go for any other repository? We will be using Azure repos itself. Okay. That's what I just want to explain. Okay. So here the important thing which we need to understand is what is branching strategies? Okay, this is the important question which everybody will be asking in the interview. What is branching strategy? What are tags? Okay, what are commits? Okay, how to do a revert of your commit? How to uh, rebase the commit? Okay, what is merge conflict? Which is the most common thing which you face? Merge conflicts. Okay, all these things we will be learning in Azure repos. These are actually Git commands. Okay, so it has nothing to do with repos. Repos is a Azure repo is a centralized server to store your code. Like how we have a GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and all, right? So similarly, Azure repos is one of them to similar functionalities, but provided by Azure. That's it. Your Git commands will be common for all the repositories, whether it is GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, whatever it is. The Git commands are same. Don't worry about. Uh, what are the git commands I need to learn for Azure repos? They are the same commands. Nothing new to learn. Okay. We'll be practicing that as well. Okay. Yeah. It will take maybe four days to complete actually the entire thing. Okay. And then Azure repos is done, right? And then we will be learning out about Azure boards. Azure boards in the sense, first of all, you need to understand what is a working model of a company. Let's say you got some project what they will do, what is agile model, what is scrum model, what is water flow model, okay? You have to understand that. After that, you will understand what is boards, how to create a plan, okay, how to create an epic, how to create a story, okay? How to create a, uh, what do you say, uh, bug, okay? These things are nothing but to track your progress of your work, what you're doing right now. Let's say I'm working for a company, okay? Let's say we got some project to our company. Now that particular client, or let's say your manager, want to distribute the work. How we can track that this particular person is doing this work, what is the progress, how much he has completed and everything. I cannot make action seal, right? Or I cannot do a note padding. These are not the right solutions. So Azure boards like iTrack and Jira, how we have in the open source market. So similarly, Azure DevOps is providing you a similar kind of dashboard is nothing but Azure boards, where you can create epic stories and bugs, uh, work items, everything. Okay, so that is boards. So you have to understand what is uh, Agile model, Scrum model. Okay, now I think everybody is following the Scrum model. What is Scrum model and all? I need to explain that. Okay, so that will be discussing here. The purpose of this is nothing but actually to track what team, which team is doing what work? Okay, what is the progress of that particular team? Okay, have we delivered the uh, functionalities what we have promised to the client or not? Everything can be tracked in this particular boards. Okay, so that is the purpose of it. Azure repos we already discussed and then Azure pipelines. Azure pipelines in the sense, you need to build some CI CD pipelines like this. Okay, I've given only one screenshot, but we have so many scenarios like this. I told you, right, there are nine to 10 scenarios which we are going to build. Okay, 
So among this, I took, I captured one of the uh, screenshot, okay, where I have created this particular workflow. Okay, so pipeline in the sense, we have two types of pipelines that we can create. One is build pipeline and one is release pipeline. So build pipeline is called as continuous integration. And the release pipeline is called as continuous delivery or continuous deploy. Okay, what is continuous integration and continuous deploy? We will discuss that a lot. Uh, like we can discuss later because it is a vast thing that I need to explain. Okay, so if you want to create a continuous integration in the Azure, we have built pipeline like this. If you go to my project, let me go to this. Here, if I go here, if I go to this option, this is called as continuous integration pipeline. Okay, if you click on this, if you go to the edit, and you can see here what this particular pipeline is doing is nothing but Okay, it is trying to build the image based on the Docker file which I have written, and then it will push my image to the registry, container registry, Azure container registry. Okay, at last I need to see my image here. Though it is not available here, that is the purpose of it. So tomorrow, what developer will do? He no need to do it from here. He, if he wants to modify here, he will modify the code here. Automatically, my pipeline will get triggered. The continuous integration pipeline. Okay. So that's how it is designed. Okay. So that is called as continuous integration. Now, now you no need to run it manually. If you want to run it manually, you can go here and you can run the pipeline. But it is automated. Automated in the sense, whenever someone is pushing the code into this particular repository, automatically my pipeline will get triggered. That also I have integrated. How I integrated, though it is not necessary for you right now, here there is called as triggers, and here you can see enable continuous integration. Whenever I see the changes in the master branch of this repo, automatically this pipeline will get triggered. So in this way, we have so many things that we can discuss here. Okay, so I am I'm just explaining you, so saying that it is it has so many functionalities to discuss. Okay, so we will be discussing each and every point in detail so that that will register in your mind. Uh, we have screenshots as well. So this is the documentation which I'm preparing. So I will be sharing to everyone. Okay, let me show you that. I'm telling about scenarios, right? This is the one. Let's say this is the first scenario. Okay, how to implement that? Okay, and then this is the second one. How to implement it? With the screenshots also I created a document. So that if someone is new to this, they can understand by looking at the screenshot. Okay, so don't worry about documentations, uh, how to practice it and all. Just you have to watch the video, look at the document and practice. Whenever you have some questions, come back to me on the WhatsApp group with the screenshot where it is failing so that I can provide you some solution to it. If it is not solving it, we will try to connect on the day itself one to one or on the next day in the session itself, we can discuss on that. I'll give you the presentation rights and you can share the screen and you can tell me what are the challenges you are facing. Okay, so don't worry about communication. Okay, don't hesitate. From your side, what I need is don't hesitate in asking the questions. Even if it is a silly question, also try to ask it. Here, everybody is to learn it. If you know this concept, why you will ask a question? No, right? You will not, not even join the course. You are joining the course in the sense to understand each and every point. So that's where you have to feel, keep your hesitation aside and come to this class and try to learn everything, whatever you can. Okay, the only thing is like you have to practice. Okay, without practice, you will never, it will never register in your mind. Okay, so practice and practice and I can, I don't need to look at this particular thing. I can tell you what is, what will happen in the background because I'm doing on daily basis. Right. So even if you also try to do it from your end, it doesn't take much time to be expertized in this Azure DevOps. Okay. See, simple guys. If someone knows more than you, you have to put some more effort. That's it. But everybody at the end of the session, everybody, both all the people should be on the same platform. Okay, with the same knowledge. Okay. So that's what I'm expecting actually. Yeah. So this is a continuous integration pipeline. And this is called as continuous deployment pipeline. Okay, if you want to deploy on your own servers 
or in your azure virtual machines or some particular target uh, registries uh, like let's say uh, serverless platforms or server platforms or your own data center if you want to deploy something that can be done in the release pipeline okay libraries you can store some important content over here let's say securing your files variables everything can be stored here let's say i have some certificates you can upload here after uploading it you can call it in your pipeline and you can download it that is the purpose of library environments which means that if you want if you have your own environment to run the pipeline you can integrate them as well how to integrate what are the things you need to take into consideration what will how your devops uh, service will communicate to that particular agent everything we will discuss and the deployment group as well okay environment should be used for uh, build pipeline deployment group should be used for release pipeline okay and then test plans so this test plans are nothing but uh, to create a manual test cases uh, in in most of the organizations we do some manual testing right for that manual testing we can create a uh, what do you say dashboard over here so if you want to run some manual test you can run it from here itself okay so you can generate a progress report uh, like the progress what you have done till now and total number of runs you have run till now load testing also you can do it from here this, this functionality has been removed actually i don't know when they will re add it but this functionality they have removed from the azure devops you can see it here starting from 2021 april 29th they have removed this particular option okay you cannot use this load testing so nothing you can't do anything here right there is no option to create okay but we can see the runs total number of runs you have done okay and the progress report you can send test plans in this sense what is the test cases you have written manual test case that also and your artifacts is nothing but if you are a programmer you will understand that if you will try to store some modules okay let us say java or python or someone they will try to store some modules in the third party repository okay let's say for python we have python index okay so this is the repository where all the packages will be all the modules will be available if i don't want to use this uh, module to uh, uh, well, let's say this repository i don't want to use it to download the modules you can create your own module uh, own repository over here to store some modules and download it okay if you want that kind of approach we need to use this artifacts so i created some scenario for this for java project so when i explain that i will explain you what is this artifacts what is create feed what is connect to feed what is recycle bin everything i will explain okay so right now this is a project so this is the organization okay so i don't have anything right now so if you say like connect to feed you can see we can use dot net we can use nugget visual studio npm maven gradle pip win universal packages okay so there are so many functionalities which are provided by azure artifacts to store your package modules okay so that is an intention of it and you have to learn what are project settings okay what is general section board pipelines repos artifacts and you need to understand what is organization okay how to create organization in the organization what is the settings how to modify the organization settings or name url display name okay who is the owner of this particular organization okay if i want to delete how i can delete it what are the permissions policies to directory usage there are so many options which you can discuss we can discuss here okay in this particular organization i have these two projects which i am currently uh, teaching for our existing batch these are the two projects which i have created every project will have its own devops cycles boards repos pipelines art uh, test plans and artifacts this will be different for each and every project in the project you can create a number of pipelines it's up to you okay you can create a number of organizations and a number of projects in the organization and n number of uh, pipelines inside the project okay so with this we will be completing our course okay and then at the last we will be discussing about monitoring tools okay azure monitoring so when you are learning about the pipeline 
you have to understand how to write a yaml template so yaml uh, yaml related pipeline so yaml is not a scripting language just you need to understand how to write a yaml file means what are the syntaxes you need to follow spaces indentation uh, uh, like the commas quotations where to add and all that you have to learn okay totally when you try to create a pipelines build pipeline there is a yaml approach and classic build okay right now what i have shown is a classic yaml in the sense you need to write a yaml file okay i'll tell you which one should be used when okay which one is the best one okay uh, and how to modify it can we use both in the combination or not all the things we will discuss okay and then this is the yaml example how you need to write a yaml file on the left you can see here okay and this is the classic approach just now what i've shown you right that is a classic approach okay and then you can schedule the build as well okay and there is a release pipeline this is how it looks for example this one okay so how will you after the ci pipeline was triggered how the release pipeline will get triggered and how it will deploy my code which is tested into my dev environment qa environment production environment or pre production environment which we call also call it as staging environment okay how will you do this how will you add the stages how will you add approvals say directly should not get deployed into my production right someone has to approve it so how will you add approvals okay how will you make it so what do you say so easy to deploy the particular things and all we'll discuss okay this is how you can see it right this is how we create a uh, pipelines and this is the example for test plans and then artifacts okay and then monitoring so in the monitoring we need to understand how to monitor your applications infrastructure containers okay networking all the things we need to monitor so how will you use this uh, monitoring and analytics service in your azure okay that's it okay so if if you want more details about me like about my uh, what do you say uh, if you want to watch some videos and all of mine you can go to the youtube and you can search for sudhi devops okay so you'll get the youtube channel you can search for more videos actually i not uploaded so many but i uploaded related to docker and kubernetes okay and then terraform a bit okay and this is my repository uh, public repository where you can get lot of examples of different things actually okay when we are actually starting the course i'll tell you uh, how to go to this repository and get my uh, what do you say the course content which i have created for other other technologies okay so try to learn more okay try to learn more i will give you my 100% okay if you want if you are willing to learn other things as well okay so this is the course content guys like if you have any questions you can ask me so this is a free trial account which you can create but mine is not a free trial account okay if you go to the subscription i am using a pay as you go if you look at this you can see this is a pay as you go which means that for whatever you have used they will add a billing for me right now it is 4760 rupees actually if you want to see you can see it here this is the bill which i have right now 4762 rupees now you can create a free account where it will be one month validity which you can use they will give you 14000 uh, which you can i will tell you how to create also so for one month you can use it after that you can go for pay as you go and use it properly i'll tell you how how to use it properly in such a way that you will not act, you will not get more billing on this okay devops if you don't practice right azure azure related services if you don't practice it will not register in your mind okay so that's the only effort which is needed from your side yeah hi sudhir just uh, how yes can you brief me if you don't mind like uh, what are the scenarios you are going to consider when you are doing yeah. some demonstrations so, i cannot explain in in detail but i will tell you what we are actually planned let me show you okay these are the scenarios you can see here scenario 1 custom docker image build and deploy pipeline for azure web apps 
another one is in that only a sub part one is with classic pipeline and one is with yaml pipeline okay and then the second scenario is dotnet asp.net core application on linux with classic editor okay and then next one with the same one but it is a yaml approach third one is also yaml approach only for web apps so in this way i have created so many scenarios till seven you can see build and deploy java using maven 2 okay acr for aks azure kubernetes service node js application build push and release pipeline these are continuous integration pipelines and then we have release pipeline four scenarios okay and then azure repos documentation okay so in this way i have created these scenarios right now for our uh, ci cd in azure devops Well, I covered maximum I can, which is third one for .NET coding, one for Java, and one for uh, Node.js, and one for Python. That's how I covered. Okay, because people will come 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 from different categories, right? Anyway, I cannot explain each and every language, but at least a CI/CD pipeline for uh, four to four to five languages. That's what I added. Is that answer your question, or okay. you are looking for? Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. It's clear. Yeah. See, if I add more, right? People will think that I need to learn some language. Okay. okay. Here, the yeah, normal point is, is not to tell you that no need of learning the language. We need to understand for that language what is the CI/CD pipeline we have to build. What are the things we need to take into consideration? Okay. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. No problem. So I hope everything is good. So yeah. yeah. So if you have any nice. questions, you can talk to the management. Technically, you can talk to me. Okay. Uh, course, kind of course. When it will start? A duration will be forty-five days, including Saturdays and Sundays, daily one hour. Okay. Timing, fees, and all you can talk to the management. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No more questions. Okay then. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining the demo. See you. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so are you? Yeah, are you? Yeah, your voice is breaking actually. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. So when you say uh, AD, Azure AD, so it can be a third party integration or to the test the other part. No, it is not like integrations. We are we are using only app registration, uh, users, groups, roles, and then custom domains, and then tenants, and then we need to understand other few points. B two B and uh, B two C practically it is impossible for us to create. Okay. Yeah, I understand. But okay, suppose we have our uh, uh, ready. So can we integrate this code? Uh, your voice is breaking. I'm not sure if it is issue from my side or not. Can you type? Can you type in what you're trying to say? Do one thing. Talk to the management. They will try to arrange the call. Yeah. We can. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Am I audible now? No, oh, your same issue. Uh, okay. Okay. So I'm expecting to say, suppose we are we are having Outlook three sixty five AD some of the uh, directories of file. So can we also expect in this uh, Azure AD? Uh, Azure AD, I will tell you, you are having Microsoft three sixty five license in the sense you are already in the Azure Active Directory. Okay. Okay. You are already in the Azure Active Directory, but you are not using it. That's the only difference. Okay. If you log into the portal with that credentials, you will see this. Portal.azure.com and give your Outlook credentials. It will show you whether you are already there or not. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying that for example, say if I'm running on another portal, can we expect the SSO like that in Azure AD? Yes, we can. Of course, why not? Okay. Yeah. We so have are to we covering the domain. domain. Yeah, we need to integrate that particular domain or the tenant to this particular AD. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Thanks. Thanks for.
Got it, Pearson. Yeah. So if you have any other questions, talk to the management. They will arrange some call if it is needed. Okay, technically. Yeah. Yep, done. Fine. Thank you. Thank you all.